we would like you congratulate the 30th anniversary of your uh, flight with the Piotr Timok. And of course, we are happy to be able to talk with you and congratulate you from International Space Station. And uh, we have uh, some questions here from the Internet. And now we are going to ask or cover all of them. When you are up there, which feelings are strong pride in being in space as one of the few places of humanity caused by a huge space universe? Honestly, I personally haven't think about it uh, so far. And maybe when I return home and have time for this, I will have to ask answers on this question. I'm ready to meet with uh, other forms, but it's a big question. Uh, ready uh, the uh, other forms, other life forms for meet with uh, us. But it's, uh, in my opinion, it's, it's impossible because uh, we fly uh, very close for yours. So. Your question is about um, uh, debris in space and uh, that it's moving very fast and uh, that there's thought there's a lot of uh, debris in orbit around the Earth and how can we avoid it. And uh, actually what we do is we track the, the debris that we can see that's large enough to track. And uh, there's many thousands of objects that are being tracked on the ground. And in fact, uh, just last night there was something that was being tracked uh, uh, that was uh, potentially going to be near us a little bit, but not, not, not too near us. And if we have to, we can uh, do a maneuver uh, to make sure that our, our orbit doesn't overlap with the debris that we can track. Otherwise, we have shielding for the much smaller debris. This is a really great question about how to live without uh, gravity after all of these years. And you know, it's uh, it has, of course, plus and minuses. Plus and why you uh, really feel it, and you never fall down from the ceiling or from the wall. <laughs> but the minus is, of course, that everything around you is flying, and uh, if you put something and not do it, definitely fly away from you, and then you spend a lot of time trying to find it out. Uh, when we stay in the uh, International Space Station, uh, we uh, still connect with uh, our family, our friends. Uh, it's possible we use uh, for this uh, IP phone and uh, mail. Uh, the next question is um, also about communicating uh, from the people of Earth to the uh, crew on the space station. Um, and we do have a lot of different ways to communicate now. It's um, much more of a, of a of a uh, normal interaction than it might have been um, 30 years ago. Uh, we have more than just the radio. We have uh, we have basically an internet connection. We have we can send video to and from the ground. Uh, we can have sort of uh, teleconferences with uh, family and friends uh, and with the ground. And uh, we have email, and uh, so we can do uh, most things we can do at our desk at home. You know, uh, talking about how the space flight uh, change uh, changes us, I don't think that so far that we changed uh, a lot during our stay here. And I don't uh, expect that anybody will change a lot. Of course, uh, it's only two of us so far. But sooner we expect there will be six people on board the station, and especially when new vehicle arrives, come visit us, like shuttle or another Soyuz, it's more than six, it's sometimes ten or eleven people. But um, a person, as a person, or man as a man, I think uh, don't really change. It stays the same. Right now we uh, can see some uh, movies, some TV shows, some uh, radio program uh, in uh, real time, but uh, there are a lot uh, yeah, DVD, and we can see some films and listen some uh, music.
Uh, my next question is about uh, how much time we have, how, much, how hard we're working, and if we're working all the time, and if we have any time to relax. And uh, we are working very hard. Uh, we're very busy. And of course, like you know, Sergey said, if there were six of us, you know, we could probably work, uh, get a lot more done than the three of us. So we're working as hard as we can. Um, we have, you know, we have uh, now, you know, Russian and, and American and European and, and Japanese modules. So there's a lot of activity in all the modules and science to be done. But the relaxation-wise, we have, we do have uh, movies to watch. There's actually, uh, I found there's a guitar up here to play. Uh, we can listen to music. Uh, we can we can talk to our friends. So there's, there's things to do. We we also we talk around the dinner table and have our our own uh, um, social activity up here. Uh, honestly, it's a hard question. Uh, is there any view on the Earth that can compete with the views from space? You know, we have a lot of uh, beautiful views uh, uh, on the Earth. Uh, but I think, uh, what, from my point of view, what can't compete with the view from space is the sun rays in, in space. You never, we never were able to see such a beautiful cars and, uh, uh, lights, uh, that we can see here while the sun is rising. And that's probably an unbidden view and I don't know, personally, see most beautiful things uh, on Earth. Uh, good question. Does staying in space cause any uh, long lives? Uh, I don't know. It's, maybe it's a little bit hard because uh, we have a lot of job and uh, as a rule we uh, work together. So, <laughs> I don't know. This question is about um, how much younger we're going to be in seconds when we come back after this expedition. And that, that has to do with uh, relativity because of how fast we're moving. And um, that's a good question. We're, we're moving around um, uh, 17,500 miles an hour, which is about uh, 8 kilometers a second. And um, the speed of light, it, it, this, is, this depends on the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers a second, not an hour, but a second. So we're moving a tiny fraction of that speed, even though we're moving really fast. And uh, so that, that ratio, and in fact, the square of it affects the, uh, the amount of our age change. So anyway, when we, when we get back, we'll be a, a tiny fraction of a second uh, younger than we would have if we stayed on Earth. Uh, you know, we very often look uh, uh, through the illuminators, try to uh, find the places where we were born or where we happen to live. And of course, it's always interesting to find uh, uh, the city where you, what you're from, or of course the street or house. But unfortunately, just looking through the illuminator, it's impossible. You just sometimes barely see the cities. But uh, when we using the uh, lenses, such as 100 millimeters lens, we can see in the photo uh, even houses, and that helps actually to be more closer to our uh, city or homeland. And the last question to ask is what kind of things we're lacking uh, on board the space station. Uh, for example, uh, what kind of food and what kind of activity? Um, I think the, the thing that's noticeable, um, you know, we're living in a, an environment that's been, uh, you know, completely de devised for us to live up here. We've, we've taken with us from Earth what, what we need in order to live in space. And uh, it's amazing how good we are at doing that. Um, but what's missing, of course, is, uh, you know, is uh, other life so green, in the space station, green, green trees, uh, you know, what we see on the ground, uh, other life. So, you know, um, there's no... Um, other than some little experiments or, you know, that we might be doing, we don't see uh, a lot of uh, other uh, green life, except when we look down, you know, then, then we see um, it on a very large scale. And uh, um, otherwise, you know, there's a small, a small number of people up here, so uh, uh, the activities, you know, are, are a little bit limited. But um, uh, there's plenty we can do to keep ourselves busy.